White tuxedo, white tuxedo, white tuxedo, white tuxedo, white tuxedo, white tuxedo. Sorry, I'm just verbalizing the thought that has been going through my mind this entire day because the Spectre theatrical trailer was released and. Oh my god, can we all agree that this is the best James Bond theatrical trailer ever released? It's not very often that a Bond film proudly it displays its heritage like this. I mean, Bond in a white tuxedo is obviously, you know, Goldfinger, Octopussy, of you to a kill. Uh, there's the bars of On Her Majesty's Secret Service in there. There's uh, the helicopter that flips over in a very Man with the Golden Gun sort of way. And we even have Bond in fancy dress, which I don't think we've seen since uh, Octopussy when Roger Moore clowned up. The trailer is also the first time we've seen pretty much all of the principal cast. Um, you know, as they will be in the film. I mean, Andrew Scott just barely snuck in there, the, like about eight frames or whatever his little shot was. Um, but it was our first real good look at uh, Blow. Uh, well, I keep calling him Blofeld, but Oberhauser. It, it's our first look at Christoph Waltz as the main villain of the piece. Apparently, I'm still holding out that Monica Bellucci is going to be revealed as Blofeld. I still have that hope. Probably not going to be. I still think there's a chance that Andrew Scott could be revealed as Blofeld. I'm still not 100% sold that Christoph Waltz is Blofeld because it seems like such an obvious thing and they know that we're savvy to this kind of thing. And I, I, I just, I feel like if he was Blofeld, they would just openly say, you know what, this guy's Blofeld because he's perfect for Blofeld. So it, it, it would be against expectation to maybe, you know, have a not perfect Blofeld or not the perfect Blofeld that you would immediately think of, and I think Andrew Scott would fit that mould quite well. It's also our first real good look at Madeline Swan, who is probably going to be the main Bond girl of this one, and I mean, though this wasn't openly said in the trailer, but I, I, I didn't even um, uh, come across this uh, intentionally, I was just sort of like, because obviously when the trailer went out, first thing was play, but then they re released it with a little bit of uh, a description, and in that description, it said something. It says like uh, uh, James Bond must, you know, find Madeline Swan, daughter of Mr. White. And I was just like, oh, okay, that's interesting. I'm not sure if that is something that I would rather have not been spoiled for me ahead of time. But you know, I know now. And to be honest, it has sort of piqued my interest a bit more in her. I mean, the fact that Mr. White has a daughter. That's, that's, that's kind of incredibly unexpected. It also looks like we're gonna have like a proper full-on traditional Q branch scene in this installment, which is, oh my, I'm so excited. Obviously we had a bit of one in Skyfall, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't in the lab. It was, you, you know, with the tinkering going on in the background and whatnot. But for this one, it looks like, yeah, they have a full, proper Q branch, and Ben Whishaw is, you know, running things, and there was even, even the DB5 snuck into the background. I'm so happy that that was in there. It was just a, a shot behind Bond. Um, so cool to see that. I, you know, obviously Skyfall couldn't have been the last time we ever saw that car because it's Bond's iconic vehicle, and it looks like Q Branch had done a pretty good job at fixing it up. It also looks like we're returning to, like, a proper, full-on, like, private army of henchmen, um, for, for the main villain. Um, like, there were corridors lined with troops, um, obviously the Spectre Hall is full of people, or what we assume is the Spectre Hall. Um, you know, it's so much about this trailer feels like it is really going back to the 60s and I oh I just I'm so happy it feels like we're really gonna have a, a reinterpretation of 60s era Bond but in a modern setting. The trailer also displayed a fantastic array of uh, uh, locations. I, I mean, I, I think pretty much all of the locations in the film are included in this trailer, and uh, you know, that, that, that's great. Uh, Skyfall, obviously, I've got a record of saying that I do think that Skyfall is one of the very best Bond films there is, but it did lack in some of, of those um, uh, sort of classic Bond elements. Um, you know, largely because of budget, apparently, you know, they couldn't go um, abroad as much. A lot of it was done in London and um, Pinewood. Um, and that was great for that film, perfect. But you can only do that so much, and, you know, it, it's good that this one looks like it's going to be really grand. Um, I'm, I'm getting kind of vibes of, like, You Only Live Twice, um, On Her Majesty's Secret Service, um, which would be amazing if the film could capture the grand scale of the likes of You Only Live Twice, Spy Who Loved Me, Moonraker, but infuse it with the more um, 
dramatic sensibility of On A Majesty's Secret Service and um, the other Craig films. If it can find that balance, it could well be the best damn Bond film we've ever had. Monica Bellucci was very much present in um, in the trailer as well. Um, it looks like she's really going to be doing the Grieving Widow bit. Um, but you know, the, the, she had some great moments of subtle acting in the fusing. Oh, I, you know, I, I'm not one for spoilers. I didn't expect to be like going through the trailer like, oh my god, I must know everything. Like when the teaser trailer came out, I was like, no, I'm only gonna watch it once or twice. That's it. I'm gonna do the reaction video. That's it. You know, not gonna, you know, <laughs> I, I could go through it. You know, um, with, with a fine tooth comb. Um, and I'm really trying not to with this one, but it's just when it gets you so excited, you know, um, how how can you not? I have heard some people complain about, sort of, you know, they feel like the trailer is spoiling too much, they didn't want to have a good look at, um, uh, Christoph Waltz, um, before the film was released, and I can sympathise with that, um, if you are one of those people, probably shouldn't have watched this video, um, but, uh, you know, at the same time I always feel like they must be holding something back, they're not going to give away everything in the trailer, they know what the internet is like these days, they know that we can all go through the trailer frame by frame and dissect every single, you know, still if we want. Um, and, I, you know, there wasn't much of London in this um, uh, trailer, which I'm assuming that London's kind of going to be like third act action, um, with it being close to home and everything. I could be completely wrong, I've no idea. Um, so I they must be holding something back from that. There's going to be some kind of dramatic chase sequence in London, surely. You know, I was kind of um, expecting there to be some kind of facial disfigurement on Christoph Waltz. Um, because I, when he turns in the trailer and you sort of see half his face is in light and the other half is in darkness, I was sure that, ah, they're not showing us that other half because there's going to be some massive scar down it or something. Um, but then you see him, you know, in full light later on and it's like, oh, no scar after all. Um, but you know, love the uh, love the jacket, love the collar. Um, anyone else think he was jangling a little bit of uh, Elliot Carver when he was there with you know the uh, the pad? You know, he gave off that Rupert Murdoch, Steve Jobs kind of vibe. Mr. Hinks looks like he's going to be a formidable Bond henchman, which is a great thing because we haven't had one of those at all during the Craig era. Um, Elvis is probably as close as we got to that, and if that's as close as we get to it. A classic Bond henchman in the Craig era, then Jesus, Mr. Hinks doesn't have a, doesn't have much competition. Um, but you know, he was, you know, in that traditional Spectre way, beating up members of the organization, presumably members of the organization. I think the Mr. White thing is probably the most intriguing aspect of the film for me. I mean, we, I, 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 we, I mean, aside from Blofeld, obviously, we haven't had a villain reappear this many times before, and I, I'm just ever more intrigued. Like when it showed what. Well, the room that he looked to be in, like, it looked, the way it was cut, it looked as if Mr. White was in a room full of, you know, old computer screens and there was a chessboard in front of him. He was playing with the white pieces, of course. Um, who the hell knows who he's playing with? Um, but I, I'm just, I'm so fascinated to know, like, how they're gonna... I don't know if Quantum will get a mention. To be honest, I don't think Quantum will get a mention at all. I think they'll just refer to it as, oh, that other organization, or, you know, you worked as uh, part of a different group or something. I don't think they're gonna wanna hark back to Quantum of Solace, so I think they're going to tread around that issue very carefully. Uh, Skyfall got me excited, but Spectre is just going that bit further, and because it is sort of, you know, twanging at the strings of the heart of a, a major Bond fan like myself, um, and as I imagine most of you guys, I mean, you know, I, 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 I'm not sure a casual film fan would necessarily realize, oh yeah, those are, that's the music from On Her Majesty's Secret Service, like, you know, which is so good. It's great that they are obviously going to make a highly commercial, highly marketable film for most people, but they're still gonna, you know, play to the fanboys a little bit, which is something that I'm not sure if the Bond series has done that much of before. Um, like I say, it, it does reference itself. It does occasionally hark back, but not in such overt ways as this, and that just gets me all the more excited, because it feels like it's really a Bond film that's made for Bond fans, which just is, you know, amazing. This will... Uh, this has the potential to be the gold standard of 
Bond films, and, uh, you know, maybe a lot of this comes from the fact that Mendes is a bit of a fanboy himself, you know, he's gone on record as saying he's a fan of, you know, the 60s and 70s era films, and it's so good that he's obviously infusing that feel, but in a modern way, which is great, into, into his films, and the fact that he's come out and said that he's not going to be doing any more of these is, uh, you know, quite the shame, because... Oh, just, just do a trilogy, mate. Please do a trilogy. I, I would love it if you did a trilogy. Please. Please, Mr. Menders. Please. So that's pretty much all that I have to uh, say about uh, this particular trailer. Uh, apologies that this is not a live reaction trailer, but, um, you know, the trailer was launched at 8am on a Wednesday. I've got to, you know, go to work and commute. Um, shortly after that time, so I didn't have time to do the full get-up, and uh, I couldn't possibly wait until this evening to, when I'm recording this video, to uh, to watch the trailer and know that people around me at work will have been talking about it and, you know, all that kind of thing. Because obviously I was there at, you know, 7.55, you know, click and refresh, click and refresh, eat brown flakes, click refresh, click refresh. That was, that was my morning, and I was not disappointed, and, um, but were you? Um, as always, I'm incredibly interested to know what all you guys have to think about this. Um, if you were disappointed, I'd be fascinated to know why. Um, the only negative critiques I've heard of the trailer so far is that people think it's given too much away. Do you think this is the case? Um, if so, um, I apologise for for dragging up all that information again. Um, but yeah, uh, until next time, Bond fans, I'm Calvin. Calvin Dyson, saying so long for now.